Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Um, as, as we said, uh, you know, we, some, some of the features uh, listed here that we didn't mention before, these are options on those uh, foreign exchange rates, the U.S. dollar base. And, and this is interesting that you'll see that they're quoted uh, in half-dollar strike prices. Rather than full-dollar strike prices, you'll see them quoted like, for example, you might see, um, depending on which uh, currency we're talking about, if we're going from say 116, 116 and a half, 117, you know, that way it gives you more options, literally, and more alternatives uh, to, um, you know, to choose from. And so from that perspective, you're going to have a lot more uh, uh, to consider and that you, you a lot more uh, uh, opportunity that you might consider depending on where that uh, foreign currency is trading. Most of these others we just mentioned, uh, uh, the cash settlement European exercise, um, quoted in U.S. dollars. This is something we didn't mention, that there is the settlement when we hit the expiration Friday. It's a little different time than you might be used to on some of the others. It's an 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern settlement time on expiration Friday. So, you know, basically, you know, you're typically, you know, if you're getting close to expiration, you want to typically be uh, looking to wind down your positions uh, uh, usually the day before when I've got an early morning settlement type of a situation. Uh, and uh, and that's fine, you know, because that way you don't want to be messing with it in the final hours. You want to go ahead and just wrap things up. Of course, if you've got a spread or you're waiting for things to, as we said, cash sell out, so you're right around the strike price of an option you sold, you might be betting that it's going to settle right there by that next morning. So there's a whole variety of strategies you can use, depending on what the charts are telling you. You know, I'm a big believer that, you know, no matter what you're reading in the news, you're going to see from me today that, you know, that the chart tells the true tale, that it tells where the money flow is going. And so that's very, very important um, to really be in tune with that. Um, so as we said, they're available in your conventional equity brokerage accounts. The options settle at the uh, uh, Reuters uh, WM published rate. Continuous two-sided quotes. This is important. So it's an exchange-traded product, so you're always seeing a bid and the ask uh, for the options. Uh, throughout the trading day, as in the typical trading hours, 9.30 to 4.15 Eastern Time. Uh, so you've got your, you know, your availability uh, to get in or get out whenever you need to. So just because we say something is European exercise, for example, meaning that it can, the option can't be exercised until the expiration, you can still get out of any option position before then. Uh, it's just by unwinding the option. When we talk about exercise, we're actually talking about acquiring the underlying asset um, which is uh, nice to not have to worry about that if you're doing some kind of a spread or, or strategy involving an option sale. So we did talk about these big six here. Um, so this is just kind of reinforcing it uh, from another perspective. It just is important to just remind you that here that the U.S. dollar is the numerator of all the pairs. So you know if you're bullish on the dollar, you're typically going to buy calls um, or consider buying calls. And if you're bearish, you might consider buying puts. Uh, if you think the dollar is going to go down. But the question still becomes, which um, which foreign currency might be stronger? Because if you just look at this, for example, if, if, the, if, if the Japanese yen was going down at the same rate as the dollar, well, then basically you'd have a situation in which this overall pair, uh, dollar versus yen, would not be making much net progress, right? If they're both going down 10%. Well, then that, that by division, obviously, you're going to get a ratio that stayed relatively flat um, versus, you know, if you have uh, the foreign currency that's actually going up a lot while the dollar's dropping, that's going to give you the best uh, move, um, in this case, to the downside. If the dollar's dropping, the foreign currency is going up. And we've seen that quite a bit, for example, with the euro um, and we'll definitely want to take a look at EUI, but also the others as well. So we can compare them against each other. Uh, I'll be giving you some prior examples here on the presentation, on the PowerPoint presentation, but then I'll be sharing with you my uh, my screen here at the end where we can look at the current uh, configurations of the charts. So as we said, over at isc.com/fx is where you can get a whole lot more information. Uh, 
to educate yourself with feature articles, as you can see here, in addition to um, uh, there are various options programs you can register for, uh, these web, the webinar series that you're on here tonight, um, and then uh, a variety of other tools at your disposal. So a whole lot of information, and of course, do a nice job of showing you what's happening over here on the right side with the, um, with the price movement. And so you can actually play with that as well and see how much uh, these various currency pairs are moving up or down uh, against the dollar. So um, if you look at what has the U.S. dollar done in the last 12 months, and I, I have to admit, I think, I'm, I think Steve may have updated this chart for me, which I appreciate, because um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you can see that uh, the dollar has, uh, has been, had, had, we've had a lot of volatility, obviously, in both directions. It's interesting that the, uh, the yuck, um, the, the, remember that's the Japanese yen, you can see that the dollar against the yen has actually, we've seen a, a drop here in the yuck of 16.97, so that would imply um, that, uh, as we were saying before, remember if the dollar is going up against the yuck, that would imply that the dollar is outperforming. In this case, if the yuck is dropping, that would imply that the dollar is underperforming. Um, you can see here in comparison, though, that these other vehicles, the dollar has been relatively outperforming in the last 12 months, 22% for CDD, um, we've got 11.5% against the euro. These are This is the biggest one, uh, British pound, a little surprising because last year British pound wasn't moving a whole lot earlier in the year, but obviously um, uh, I should say the dollar against the British pound really made a, with BPX a big pop to the upside uh, in the second half. And then also the dollar against the Australian uh, dollar, AUX at, over at ISE, had another nice pop there, 33%. You look at these numbers and you say, gee, you know, when, with the stock market going through its travails and challenges, uh, you know, clearly there's some pretty good movement happening uh, with these with these dollar against these other foreign currencies, in this case in both directions, mostly to the upside, but again, uh, uh, versus the yen, uh, the yuck uh, moved down, so you could trade that on the downside with puts, if you catch that right, you know, you can do well trading both sides here. And that's what we're really after as traders, isn't it? We're really looking for the opportunity to uh, make money on both sides. The, the, probably the, the least moving there was that bottom one, SFC, was uh, saw the dollar up 4% against, 4.07% against the, uh, that's the Swiss franc. So, you know, nice double-digit moves in both directions for five of the six vehicles on a year-over-year -year basis. So, and you can see based on the pricing of these vehicles, this is another thing I like, is that you've got vehicles that are trading anywhere right now from 71 up to 150. And that, and remember we said half-point strike prices. I mean, that, yes, they're not going to be necessarily as volatile as your typical stock, but at the same time, you know, I like uh, trading things that are have some higher dollar basis. Uh, the unfortunate part of the stock market is that too many stocks have been battered so badly that you have a lot of the uh, bank stocks, for example, trading at five and six dollars, where you know all of a sudden it's not so interesting to trade, you know, uh, a put option on a on a stock at five with the maximum five points of downside risk to nothing. Whereas here, you know, you'll see on charts where you can make, um, you know, some some bigger point moves than that, and partly because of the dollar, uh, higher dollar value of these indexes, which I like personally, so that's just my personal opinion. Now, for keys to find the big trends in FX, there's a few we're going to key on, and some of these may be new concepts to you before if you haven't heard me speak. One of them is something I developed called acceleration bands, where we're looking at, okay, what's the typical support and resistance range for a, a particular FX pair? And we're going to say, okay, how can we identify when we get an acceleration outside of that typical range versus when are we stuck in the range where it might not be as exciting of a trade? So we want to know that. We, as we said, we've defined the opportunity already. We've been listing all the key vehicles that we want to trade. So one of the beauties is that um, for those of you that follow stock options, for example, there's over 3,100 different uh, options that ha that. 3,100 different stocks, I should say, that have options on them. So literally hundreds of thousands of optional choices in the stock options universe. But the beautiful thing for, for these uh, ISC FX pairs is you've got six vehicles to focus on. You're not dealing with as much information overload. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcast.